Hi, okay, so uh, it is November, it is Native American Heritage Month, and uh, on the channel we always like to cover um, a few different types of uh, recipes for the month. Uh, today we're going to be making something that's called Peganin, which is an Algonquin wild nut soup, and we'll be making that with um, hazelnuts. Um, if you remember last year, and I'll link some of these videos down below as well, we also did a nut-based soup as well, and I really um, enjoyed that. So um, the Algonquins, uh, a tribe up typically in Eastern Canada. So we're gonna make that, and then I also, like every year, I like to take out the, the, the sous chef cookbook, which is uh, really good. I'll link that for you all um, as well. And I'm going to be making the um, amaranth crackers. So sous chef Sean Sherman, this is um, a James Beard winner um, as well, and he is, um, or his tribe is the Oglala Lakota tribe, and then they are uh, typically residing in um, South Dakota. So obviously we take this month and we make, you know, different recipes to, to kind of educate ourselves and to celebrate, you know, Native American heritage, Native American history. Um, but I always find it a bit strange and a bit silly when you have a day or when you have a month to celebrate people, but you don't really, you know, totally care about them. And so um, I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk about kind of the, the topic of the moment um, for, for Native tribes, for Native groups, um, and that is the Supreme Court case of Holland versus um, Brakeen. Um, you can go into the, the nitty gritty of it, and, and, and I'm sure everybody has their opinion on everything. It's about an adoption case. It is um, a white family versus um, Native tribes that want uh, their their children that are put up for adoption to have um, certain preferences before going out outside of the tribe. But the case itself is not really about adoption. So um, the law firm Gibson Dunn, which typically represents big oil like Chevron, like, like Shell, um, they have taken on the case for free for the white families against, um, against the tribes. Anytime big oil, whether it be big oil, big tobacco, it could be Nestle, like when they take on a case, like that, you have to ask yourself, okay, like there's clearly there's a bigger picture here. Like what, what is going on? So Gibson Dunn, they're also representatives of Energy Transfer, which is the, the company behind the, the Dakota Access Pipelines. Essentially what they're really challenging is, is to be a Native American, to be part of a tribe, that is a political designation. You get certain rights, you get certain authorities. Um, what the case is trying to really argue is that, okay, well, uh, being native, that, that's like a, a racial designation. And so when you have law where something is preferred based on race versus based on the authority that you have, now you can say, okay, well, that thing is unconstitutional because it's, you know, reverse, reverse racism, which is what they were trying to argue um, with the adoption case this becomes really dangerous because if you can argue that this preference that adoption of native children be kept you know either with extended family or within the tribe and you say well that is a racial preference now it sets precedence for all the other cases of where you know america originally had to put in these laws because they were so horrible to the natives that these laws were put there for protection. And so once you challenge one, you can start being like, okay, well, like the reason that they have healthcare access for Native Americans is because like this is a this is a racial preference. This is not because they are, you know, their own entity. They have authority, they have rights, they pay taxes. Um, and that sort of a thing. So really, it, it gets quite sinister. We have native groups that are against pipelines that are costing us money. How do we 
eliminate that, like all of it, not even one particular case. We could care less about adoption and, and, and kids, but like, how do we make it so that at the root, we don't have this problem anymore? And so, you know, you have these researchers and these legal teams that kind of look through case laws of the past and they may pick one where they're like, well, this one can be a little bit subjective. Like I can see, you know, cases maybe that harp on people's emotions, people's stereotypes, and they find these like little weak points so that if they win one case, it puts into question all of the other cases, all of the other cases that were there to protect Native Americans, but now give tribes rights and so once you attack one you can now question all of them that all of these laws are actually you know it's racial discrimination the reason that they have these rights is because of their right race the reason that they have these authorities is because of their race and that is unfair and not that well native tribes native groups they were given these lands they were they are a political designation. They have rights, they have authorities that they can exercise. Um, and so you want your education to be revolutionary in that it changes what was wrong with in the past so that you can continue on better and on the right side of things. Uh, Supreme Court, uh, historically not, not the, the best of deciders, they were they were against having laws against child labor. They were for, for slavery. So uh, it's really not necessarily the, the people that you should look to uh, if you want to you know, set things fair and set things right. And so I think what we can do is just you know, really educate ourselves and, and be alert when these issues come out so that you know, we can help and, and that we can speak up as well because it's, it's really pointless to be like, yay, like Native American Heritage Month, let's make some soup, um, which is, you know, what we're gonna be doing today, but delicious soup, so uh, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> So I'm starting off by toasting some hazelnuts. Uh, I'm making a smaller amount, so you wanna do about uh, one cup for about four people. So um, a cup of hazelnuts, toast it in the oven for eh, 10, 15 minutes. Not too high though, uh, until they get nice and fragrant. And you're gonna be cooking the hazelnuts for a little bit, so just keep it in chunks if you like it. Uh, chunky and then we're just going to cut some shallots and some parsley so very easy recipe now you just want to add a little bit of oil to the pan I'm still not having uh, oil at the moment but a little oil to the pan and then add your shallots and cook them until they're kind of semi-translucent after which you want to add about uh, four cups of like a veggie stock in and then add in the nuts add in the parsley uh, a pinch of salt and a pinch of black pepper and we're going to cook this for an hour and a half uh, just well it the nuts need to get nice and soft and actually it takes a while to get there I'm still not used to putting nuts in my soup, but I'm really glad every time I do because uh, yeah, it does kind of taste, um, it's like very hazelnutty, which almost reminds me of chocolate all the time because of Ferrero Rocher, but um, it has that, like it's really nutty. 
and it's really creamy and it's uh, and you do need that hour and a half to get it uh, nice and soft um, they will say that some people uh, do put it into the blender afterwards so that you get a creamy soup but um, if you wanted to keep it chunky you could do that and then if not then just go ahead and blend it Gosh, I was very behind schedule with that. So one cup of amaranth for our amaranth crackers. And in some ways, I guess we should have made this first because this takes a little longer to do. Uh, three cups of water, and we're going to bring this up to a boil and then turn it down and essentially cook it until it gets to a nice thick paste, almost like a dough. So. It does take some time, it does take some patience, but uh, it's quite nice. And I imagine you could probably do this with like quinoa maybe as well. When your dough gets nice and thick like this, you wanna go ahead and add one tablespoon of sunflower oil. So that's according to the book. And really how thick you get it, I mean, it's important, but essentially you're going to dehydrate it in the oven. So the more water you have in this, probably the, the longer it will take for your crackers to crisp up in the oven. You can see the blobs are getting a little haphazard by the end. Um, essentially, we're just going to flatten it and Chef Sherman actually said, just use your hands and get it as thin as possible. So the easiest way to do that was just to wet my fingers a little bit with water so that it wouldn't stick because uh, this whole uh, amaranth mixture is uh, actually quite sticky. These came out really pretty. They came out really well and, and quite rustic looking. Um, the taste was, it reminded me of like cereal, like if you have kind of like a rice cereal, but more, more hearty. It has a nice crunch and a nice uh, bite to it. So yeah, the soup and cracker pairing was completely made up, but they worked really well together. And the, the nut soup, it was very fragrant um, and like nice and rich too. And uh, it's nice because the crackers are kind of on the heartier side. So, you know, with a little bit of liquid or if you have some kind of hummus or some kind of dip, it would be really, really nice. So I hope you all enjoy.